Hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today, I'm going to teach you how to play Earth from Inside Up games, specifically the competitive mode. Now, there is a cooperative mode that is available as well, and a solo mode, which both share similarities to the competitive mode, so this video will get you up and running and get the core systems and structures in place. Along with that, I am working with a prototype copy here, so do make sure to double check your rulebook and check iconography and card types, just to make sure that if there have been changes between this video and when you're getting your game, you can catch any of those that are there. But in about 10 minutes, I should be able to get you up and running with Earth. Now, if everything in front of me looks a bit intimidating, that's because I'm currently sitting in front of a finished game, a three-player game to be precise, with tons of tableau cards built out here, shrubbery and growth tokens all over the place, objective scoring piles, and large mountains of compost. And I wanted to give you a sense of what the end game will look like. You see, in Earth, the reason you should be paying attention to it is you're going to be building a giant tableau, an, an ecosystem of cards that start chaining new abilities and actions that start getting various types of plants and, of course, do their very best to meet up with the different scoring objectives in your main board, the public area, and your personal board, your private ecosystem, climate, and island. This game starts off very simply with one or two cards and a draft of cards that you have in your hand. But by the end, you will have this sprawling uh, environment full of life and rich plants and ecosystems that harbor and give you tons of different opportunities to utilize and take certain actions. Now, I do think we need to uh, get rid of this chaos and swing back over to, uh, well, let's say a starting board. All right, we're back to a bit more of a manageable board state in front of us, and I'm gonna be setting up only one player board, but if you're playing with multiple players, which in a competitive mode you will be, everyone's board should set up the same as the one that I'm going to have on display here. So to start the game, you need to make sure everyone has their little leaf markers and they'll go into the designated zones along with one up here to uh, show what action you're taking throughout the course of the game, and you can set that just off to the side. Along with that, we have the main uh, sort of community board here, which will show a variety of scoring objectives that we'll go through in just a moment. Outside of that, you want to make sure your resources are easily available because people will be grabbing them. I usually put them in bowls kind of around the table because you're always going to be reaching for these. We have our growth cubes over here for the low-lying shrubbery. We have our earth tokens here that'll be paying the cost for the cards that we play. We have our uh, larger growth tokens for the... And these aren't called growth tokens. These are called like plants. We have our larger growth tokens and their caps that'll be utilized to grow larger trees, bushes, and uh, tall creeping vines. And you always, on the last one, let's say it was a stack four tall, you always put a cap at the very last and top of your pile. So let's start digging into this game. When you first initially set up, you're gonna be pretty straightforward. You'll start by handing every player one of their ecosystem cards their island cards, and their climate cards. These are going to be placed up here into this top region, and each of these cards are going to be front and back because they all have different scoring objectives and conditions, and you might want to choose something that fits your play style. For instance, here with Lazan Island, uh, you're going to have a yellow ability, but you're going to start, and you can see it down here in the lower uh, left-hand side, you're going to start with six cards in your hand, you're going to compost four of them, and you're going to gain four dirt. That's your starting resources. Now, any icon that you need reference for will be displayed down here at the bottom of your player board. So if you're asking the question, like what does the uh, little recycle symbol with the hand inside it mean? Well, it's right here, compost from your hand. Uh, you also are gonna be scoring in-game victory points based on the cards you take. For instance, Luzon, Lurzon Island here starts with 10 victory points that you can see in the top right there. Now, if I flip the card over, we're going to have Nishoshima Island. This one is going to start with 11 cards in your hand and you're going to compost three. You're also going to have six dirt. It's going to have a brown ability that deals with uh, different types of sunny cards, which we'll get into in just a little bit but it's going to score no victory points 
at the end of the game. So a little bit of a give and take. When you've selected your island, you'll place it up here in the top. Next, you're gonna be looking at your climate. Your climate is going to typically have a in-game ability. For instance, this climate here is going to give you plus one dirt every time you take the yellow action. And on the other side here, you're going to be able to compost and gain three plant cubes if you choose the yellow action. Now, notice the difference there. Anyone who activates the yellow ability will get this yellow ability. This one specifically says if you choose, which is a modifier for when it's your turn and you're selecting that yellow ability. Once you've grabbed one of these, place it down here onto your board as well. And then finally, take a look at your different scoring objectives. For instance, here with this ecosystem, you'll score two points for every plant with three or less locations to place plants or, or plant squares. Cubes or plants are not needed to score this card. So it's about having the environment or ecosystem that could grow those plants, not necessarily having them on your table. And the one over here, score five points for every two cards each with four plus cubes on them. So the more deciduous growth, the more shrubbery you have, the more you'll score. So at the start of the game, you might not fully know what each one of these objectives are, but make sure you read through them, understand them, and pick something that to you sounds interesting or fun. Every player will have those three starting cards. Over here on the main board, you're also going to be placing out some scoring objectives, and I noticed that I left some tokens on there that should not have been there. Those are from other players. We'll set them off to the side. So to start with, you're going to have four locations that have in-game competitive scoring. Earthworms, Kingfisher, Hummingbirds, and Eagles. Now, these are all double-sided as well, which means you can uh, freely randomize them, and there is a whole collection of various different types of animals. Now, each animal is looking for a specific environment, and once you meet these conditions, you'll go ahead and place one of your four markers over on that location in first, second, third place, so on and so forth, scoring the corresponding victory points. So up here with earthworms, for instance, the first person to have 15 plus cards in their compost pile will score for earthworms because they want a rich soil. Kingfisher here has six plus cards with blue abilities in your four x four tableau, which we'll get into in just a moment. Kingfisher wants large open watery areas. Eagles are looking for four plus plants, each with three plus growth counters. That's gonna be the symbol for these type of, because they want trees and nesting locations. And hummingbirds are looking for three plus plants with a color in their name, and it specifies that colors are located with italicized words. So they're looking for bright, beautiful, and colorful flowers to feed on. After you set up that board, you're then going to place down two ecosystems, which of course are double-sided. These are the same cards that you might be drafting onto your personal player board, but unlike the cards in your personal player board that are just for you to score, these are going to be for everyone around the table to score. We have the cloud forest up here that's looking for set collection of mushrooms, and we have the Great Plains next, which is looking for two victory points for every dirt that's left in your reserve at the end of the game. So you'll be squabbling and competing for these cards, but everyone could score the maximum points for each of them. And then finally, we have this mark here in the center, showing seven points for a completed grid. The way you drive endgame in this game is by completing a four by four grid of cards. And we'll get into placement in just a moment, but just know if you wanna wrap up the game or finish it, you will finish your grid, place your marker over here, and then everyone else will get an equal amount of turns. So we've set up the board, we've got the table in place, we've randomized and really taken the cards that we wanna utilize. And the rule book specifies, if you don't quite know what you're going for, there's almost nothing that's a terrible choice. Because in this game, everything escalates into something else and you'll have a plethora of cards and opportunities to score and maximize your play. So take something that you understand and something that sounds fun to begin with and then start playing multiple games to get those precise combinations you're looking for. You're going to reference your island card here, and if you haven't already done this, go ahead and take your starting resources. For instance, my island card says I get six cards into my hand, but then I need to immediately compost four of them, uh, and I get four dart, dirt uh, darts as my starting resource, which I'm going to go ahead and put here into my dirt pile. So, 
with these six cards, I'll go ahead and take a look at them. This is probably a good time to start talking about the cards that you're going to get into your hand. And I have a pile over here that'll be probably the best way to reference them. So you're going to have core three different types of cards with variations. You're going to have plant cards that have a lot of iconography and we'll go through those for scoring in a little bit. You're also going to have uh, different uh, environment cards or, or uh, event style cards like a sunny hillside or a volcano. These cards set up a network of scoring on your board and you'll see either instant abilities which are going to be the black abilities or end game scoring which are going to be the brown abilities on these cards. And then you'll have cards that have lightning bolts right next to the name. These are going to be instant actions that you could take at any moment. So as you have your hand of cards, you'll start looking for things that have what you're looking for. For instance, colors in the name, plants that can have three plus growth counters on them, potentially opportunities to compost cards or blue abilities. And like I said, don't focus too much on maximizing your play at the very start. Focus on what seems fun and what hits one or two of your objectives. For instance, I can see this card here, the red birch, has a blue ability on it. So maybe this is one that I want to keep in my hand. And looking through here as well, I can see that Badlands are going to generate me one dirt every time I take the green ability, and they're going to score me points for bushes in this row. And early on, it doesn't, it isn't bad to start your tableau by something that scores you extra objective points. So I might keep that in my hand as well. These other cards I haven't closely looked at, but I'm also not going to stress about that. Instead, because I know I have to compost four cards, I'm gonna go ahead and set them down in the compost pile, confident that I will get plenty of cards in the future. So, I've already got my dirt, I composted the cards, I drew up my hand, and now we're ready to start playing the game. So, let's talk about how you take actions and how you specifically take simultaneous actions in Earth. Well, it's going to be with this action track across the top of your board and then corresponding tableau that you've built out. So each one of these locations, green, orange, blue, and yellow, have actions associated with them. To simplify it, it's basically going to be play cards, draw cards, get earth, compost, uh, or get earth, earn compost, get plants, earn dirt, draw cards, get growth. But we'll dive into them a little bit more specifically. When you select an action, you'll move your marker to the uh, corner symbol there on the edge and everyone will get the topmost action in that location. For instance here, and again, iconography down below, we have play two cards and then draw four cards and keep one. That's the main player ability. And then everyone else around the table will get to play one card and draw one card. Moving over to the orange zone, you'll gain five dirt and you'll compost two cards from the deck. Noticing that that's the deck symbol and not the hand symbol. Everyone else around the table will either get to compost two cards or go ahead and collect two dirt. Moving over to this other side, the blue action, you will gain six plant cubes and you do need locations on your tableau, which will be uh, these plant scoring squares in order to place those plants down on your board. So if you don't have enough room, you could always compost them for dirt, three plants converting into two dirt, and you'll gain two dirt. Everyone else around the table, like the other actions, will either take two plants or go ahead and gain two dirt. And then this final yellow action here will let you draw four cards and gain two growth counters. The same concept remains, you need the location on your plant that can sustain those growth markers. Of course, capping uh, whatever height you can with uh, your little final growth cube there. And everyone else around the table will gain either two cards or two growth markers. Now, you might be noticing that there's squares across the middle of all these actions, and that means that every player is going to get to take whatever corresponding abilities they have associated with each color. So here in green, you'll take whatever green abilities you have. For instance, the Badlands card that I kept in my hand will go ahead and gain me one dirt. Or red here will give you the opportunity to take every red action you have and every multicolor action you have. So for instance, this one here, the red birch, I'd be able to compost two cards from my hand. Same thing with blue and multicolor and yellow and multicolor. 
you'll resolve your actions from top to bottom, left to right. Meaning that if you have to generate a resource to pay for a card in a future sequence, you might wanna make sure that you're able to do that early on. And as you progress down, you'll be able to convert your resources into points or more actions, really maximizing the tableau that you're building. So that's how core actions are taken. Every player will continue going around, selecting the action they wanna take, giving the bonus actions to other players, and everyone should keep track of what action was just taken whether by themselves or by their opponents by moving their marker so everyone's on the same page because you will be simultaneously playing and simultaneously resolving all of your abilities and all of your actions. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about how you actually go about building your tableau. And in order to do so, I'm going to scoot this main card off to the side here so we can uh, have a grid where we can build. So when you start the game, you'll have no cards down in your tableau. But once you start, you'll place your first card. For instance, if I went here to the green location, I would pay whatever cost is in the top left-hand corner, showing the dirt symbol, which in this case is going to be four dirt, to play that card down on my board. Now, at the moment, I technically don't have enough dirt to go ahead and purchase another card, but let's pretend that I did. The next card that I play down can go in any of the eight corresponding areas or zones adjacent to this card, with diagonal being considered adjacent as well. The final objective of the game is to complete a 4x4 four four grid, meaning 12, no, 16 cards total. And you cannot play an overhanging card, meaning one that's not connected to your main player grid. So one of the things that I've learned throughout the course of play is establish point scoring or leave a open pocket where a point scoring card could generate points for a row or column ability throughout the course of play. Don't just fill up top to bottom, left to right, unless, of course, you think you have a strategy that will work like that. So as we take actions, we'll slowly start building out our grid. Let's take a closer look at the cards we'll actually be utilizing to play into our grid. So I'm going to place out first the Giant Sequoia. Giant Sequoia is going to be a cost of 8 in the top left hand side. It's going to have a victory point of 1, meaning that if it's in your tableau and constructed, uh, which every card in your tableau is constructed, it'll score you that victory point. It's going to be a sunny, wet, and snowy region, meaning that it sustains all of those types of ecosystems and different cards will recognize those or, or reference those uh, icons. You can see these icons down here in plant types. Specifically, it is sunny, wet, and that is called cold, not snowy. This is a giant sequoia, uh, which might be a terminology that's used in other references. You can see the icon for the type of plant it is, meaning this one is a tree, and it's going to have a location that could have up to eight growth counters. Now, the interesting thing about growth counters is that, like I've said earlier, they start to stack, meaning that I'd place seven down here, which is actually uh, a whole lot of fun for me. I'd place seven down here, and then the final growth counter that I'd place would be the uh, top of my tree here, meaning that as you build out your board, like you saw at the beginning of this video, you'll have a whole ecosystem full of plants that have been played. Now, every growth counter is going to be worth a victory point at the end of the game, unless you cap it off. And then instead of straight victory points for growth counters, you'll score the little leaf symbol next to whatever that growth is. For instance, in this case, if I had eight counters on the board, I would then score 13 points. Now, scrolling down here, you'll see the little square areas. These are areas where low-lying shrubbery or plants are gonna be played when you gain those resources. Now, once again, these are resources you could spend for more actions, but these are also going to be points at the end of the game. And you'll see that I have a nice bright yellow ability here. That ability gets taken whenever I or one of my opponents takes the yellow action. This one specifically will make me pay two cubes or two plants from any card, but it could be from this one, to generate four growth, which is actually fantastic considering the giant sequoia is blocking out the lowland shrubbery and slowly reaching itself to the sky. And of course, we have a little pocket of flavor text down here at the bottom. The oldest known sequoia is approximately 3,200 years old. So if you're like me, take some moments to read some of the most interesting cards throughout your course of play. Now, one thing that needs to be noted around the abilities that you're taking any costs that you have, for instance here, pay two plant cubes, must be paid in full, especially or conditionally if there's a semicolon between it and the result. 
For instance, if I didn't have two plant cubes to pay, I could not gain those four growth tokens. But any reward you have does not have to be taken in full. So the four growth tokens could be three if that's all I could sustain on my board, and that wouldn't be a problem. So that's the giant sequoia. Here we have the Florida Strangler, which you will notice does not have areas for growth cubes to play down, but has the same conditions and a red ability. Here we have the Coral Fungus, which you'll see has a lot of different locations for abilities to be played down, and it has one of these multicolored actions, which means you'll take it any time a red, blue, or yellow score is taken. Now, when it comes to point scoring as well, anything that specifically is referencing a color, for instance, here with Volcano, score two points for every red location in one player's field, includes your island and your climate. So this card would also score for any rainbow or any multicolor card because this card is a multicolor action, uh, but it also counts as a red card for point scoring at the end of the game. Uh, continuing with this, we will have different environment cards. I have the volcano that I already went through, I have the sunny island, and I have the boreal forest. These will still have the climate or the environment up top, but some of them might have different, on, different terms on them. If you see a brown location, this is going to be a end of the game point scoring objective that is gonna to relate to your tableau that you're building. And if you see a green, that'll be a rare, uh, more rare in my experience, resource that you'll gain when you take the green action specifically. Now, if you see a black box, this is going to be a one-time effect. Some of these will be on cards that you play into your tableau, and others will be on instant actions that you'll play here into your instant action discard pile or utilize pile. This one, for instance, is a sunny hillside, uh, which would pair fantastic with my giant sequoia because it's going to go ahead and gain me seven growth counters immediately. But nothing else will trigger or activate that card as after it's been played into your tableau. So you should rate whether or not it is worth filling a spot in your tableau to get that immediate benefit. In my case, it would be fantastic. Uh, so you will have a slow moving grid slowly building out here. Uh, leaning towards or working your way towards a 4x4 four four final grid. Now, we will have these lightning bolt cards in our hand, and these are going to be a little bit different. You'll notice that these lightning bolt cards have a negative modifier next to the victory points. That's because every one you play, not discard, not put into your compost, every card you play with an instant immediate action will give you the effect or the bonus, but also cost you a certain number of victory points to do so. But you could play these at any point on your turn, on another player's turn, and in between actions. This one, for instance, will cost four dirt, but it'll gain me four cards and allow me to compost four cards, which to me sounds exactly like a landslide. And this one is a heat wave, which will cost me three plant cubes or three uh, shrubbery cubes, but it'll gain me six growth tokens, which are going to be our big forest or woodland areas, because during a heat wave, low-lying shrubbery dies, but the high-reaching trees enriched from the sun grow even taller. So that's the core structure of the game. You're going to continue playing through a series of rounds with every player getting an equal number of turns and whoever triggers endgame scoring those seven victory points over here on our uh, community board. Now, when it comes to point scoring, you can reference your endgame scoring down here on your 4x4 four four grid. So you're going to score points based on VP on cards. That's that top right icon next to the leaf symbol. You're going to score one point per plant cube on your tableau. It's going to be our little shrubbery cubes that I keep referencing. You're going to score one point per composted card. It's going to be the action that starts throwing cards into your compost heap, making sure the soil is as rich as possible. You're going to score one victory point for every growth piece that you have on your board, but you'll also, correspondingly, score the maximum amount of points if you've, if you've completed your growth token, but not one point for every single one. So for instance, if I had three here on this location that wants five total, I would score three points. But if I had three here on the coral fungus that only wants three total and I've capped it off with its green canopy lid, I will score six points because that's how much the card tells me to score. Moving over, I will score victory points from Fauna Board, uh, which is going to be over here. I will score victory points from Terrain Cards, which are going to be the brown cards or the tan cards that I put here into my tableau, like the Sunny Island or the Boreal Forest. 
I will score victory points from event cards, which are oftentimes, like I said, going to be negative modifiers. And I'll score victory points from ecosystems, which are the green cards that you have either in the public scoring area or on your own personal tableau. And that's Earth. It is a helter-skelter, point silent, salad style game where a great score is going to be somewhere in the 3 to 350 point range, and a really good score can be comfortably between 220 and 260, at least in my experience in a three-player game. There is a lot happening here on the table, and everything escalates into everything. So if you're watching this to get started, here would be my recommendation. Pick one or two objectives you want to go for, and just have fun compost cards helter skelter hold them in your hand as you play and do your very best to learn and experience the game and enjoy 40 minutes of simultaneous play because once you get to the end you're going to want to dive in again now one trick the rule book does reference for hand management because there might be times when you have a lot of cards that you're going through as you're looking at the cards in your hand if you decide that you do or don't want something and you're going to compost it in the future go ahead and flip it backwards just so it's not something that you're keeping in mind that makes the compost action a lot easier because if I have these three cards, I'm not worried about evaluating them again. I've already decided they're not useful. I might take a quick glance and confirm that I don't like them and then toss them into my compost pile. It's a little trick that once you get more and more comfortable with the game does help speed up and ease your flow. The other thing that I would encourage you to do is don't stress or pay attention to other players' actions or turns too heavily. This game is all about your personal tableau and the bonuses you're getting from other people. But don't worry about what they're playing into their zone, composting into their pile, or the objectives they're going for. You might glance over every now and then for these fauna objectives because these are the only competitive part of the game when it comes to timed scoring events, and see if they feel like they have 15 compost or not. That might be the one condition where you want to keep an eye on that track, but honestly and realistically, even if you get it in second or third place, you can still be more efficient in other ways that'll help you score and eke out that victory. So that's been a how to play video. Hopefully you enjoyed sitting at the table with me and whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing, get out and play some games and I'll see you next time. Thank you.